you should say not. Good evening and live from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the sun and fun capital of the world. This is Dr. John Stamey, and I'd like to welcome everybody to Scary Cast. We've got a great show, really a special show. I'm so excited with our guests. I'm the host tonight. I decided I wanted to do it myself because we got such cool people and, and I know them very well. First of all, we have got Jessica Jones, the cryptid huntress. How are you doing tonight, Jessica? Hey, Dr. John. I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much for having us. You're welcome. It's always glad to have you here. You're, you're a real breath of fresh air and sunlight whenever you come on our show. So that's great. And tonight we have, I believe, the youngest Bigfoot explorer in the world with us, your son, Ben King. Good evening, Ben. How are you doing? Good. I'm, I'm happy great. to be on the show. Well, thank you. We're, we're glad to have you on the show. I met Ben at the Georgia Bigfoot Conference on Friday night. There was this nine-year-old kid who acted like a 30-year-old a adult, and he was very entertaining, and he got a lot of good press from Sonia Thompson, from the guest hosts that were there. And so I decided it was time to put him on ScaryCast. I wanted to be the first person to get an interview with the one and only Ben King. So Ben, thanks a lot for being here and thanks for being here with your mom because she's a good friend and always glad to have, have her around. So I got some questions I wanna ask you because you are, I believe, the biggest or the youngest Bigfoot explorer we've got. So tell us a little bit about when did you start exploring Bigfoot? I guess it was with your mom uh, at the very beginning and kind of up through now, you know, how are you doing in terms of exploring for Bigfoot? Um, well, to answer your first question, I was five years old when, when, when I first ever went out with my mom and our entire team, the, the North Georgia cryptid researchers. Um, that night, that was my first experience going out bigfooting, and our team was with Grumpy, which is um, Bob. He recently passed away, but we were also with Daryl and her daughter Lily, and she's the second youngest. She's twelve or eleven, um, and and a bunch of other people. Matthew Delph. Math Matthew Delph and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, well, that's and and we we are good friends with Matthew. He has been with me since I began these um, these cryptid conferences. He was at Bigfoot Day 2017 in Kingsport, Tennessee, when we celebrated the 50th anniversary. It was held on October the 20th, the 50th anniversary of the Patterson Gimlin footage of Bigfoot out there in California and it was great and he was there and he has been a good friend of Scary Cast and a good friend of mine ever since. Always glad to have him and I know Jessica, he's a good friend of yours too, right? Oh yeah, me and Matt go way back. I just I love him to death. Uh so yeah, we 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 try to go bigfooting with Matt as much as we can cuz he is the badass monster hunter. So <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> But to be honest with you, he truly isn't that badass. That's for sure. Get to me. He truly isn't. He, he truly he, isn't. He, he takes this opportunity to say that word, his title, because he's a kid and he's not supposed to say that. Okay. So, uh, but he 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 gives Matt a hard time. They're they're buddies. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's great. I'm glad you, you and Matt are good friends and uh, we're all good friends, Matt. Matt and uh, Jessica are at all my conferences. Wouldn't. I couldn't have a conference without them. So anyway, thanks a lot. And so more recently, when was the last time that you went Bigfooting and uh, were a Bigfoot explorer? And I'm sure it was with your mom, right? Yes, um, it was actually the night. Be it was this weekend, the night before the conference of it was either after or before. Mm -hmm. Both, I guess. Um, we went out re trying to find some Bigfoots, but we actually, it wasn't actually Bigfoot. It was actually 
I was getting Alien, Skinwalker, and Rake vibes. And I saw, so I saw movement onto my left, and then I saw two heads, like, like, big, large heads, and then, like, a really skinny neck, and then they were both, like, and it wasn't hairy, and I knew that for sure, because I didn't see a single piece of hair on them. They will eat every second, they will poking their, their, one was behind a really thin tree, and then one, one was behind a bush, and they both kept on poking their heads out at the same time, just mocking me, like what Bigfoots do sometimes. Okay, let, let me ask you something, Ben. Do you think what you saw was a rake, or was it a wendigo, or was it something else? I don't know if I can actually answer that question. If I had to say, I think I would say, well, the thing that will pop in behind the bush and tree, I think it was either a rake or an alien, and for well, the movement on the left still a mystery to me. Well, I, okay. Can I give you some background on where we were and what we call that field that we were in? We call that field the UFO field. And uh, <clears throat> and this is an area that I've researched for a long time. <clears throat> and I've had some serious UFO activities and ET activity out there. So for him to say that it looked as though it could have been alien, or extraterrestrial, that's not very far-fetched. I actually saw what he was talking about too. Uh, I was there, of course. And, uh, and we were surrounded by some some sort of beings out there. There were two or three. I, I, at first, I thought they were Bigfoots. But, yeah, this was the night before the Georgia Bigfoot Conference uh, up there in the North Georgia Mountains. Uh, we went Bigfooting that night. And then we went hiking after the conference on Sunday as well. So Ben, ben got a, a good dose of that. We, we also had our friend Robbie range with us. And, uh, and he has a police officer out of South Carolina. And uh, he was with us. And... He said the hair on the back of his neck stood up pretty, pretty tall when uh, when we started getting surrounded by whatever kind of creature was out there that night. I certainly can understand that. And now I would like to make an observation. Now, Jessica, you are known as a remote viewer. And I have seen you do it before. and You've done a really good job. And for the people that don't know, that means you're a psychic and you can tune in to various locations at various times would you say that's a good description of a remote viewer it is yeah i'm given blind targets and uh, and i'm able to locate targets which are anything from a location uh to an event to an object to missing people cryptid sightings all that stuff i i locate targets using blind coordinate numbers yes okay well i would like to be the first person I hope I'm the first person to mention this, but it sounds like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Ben said he perceived there might be a rake or he perceived there might be an alien. So it sounds like he has some of your talents that he can perceive and feel entities that are around him. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, ever since Ben was a little a little kid, uh, we've had strange activity occurring around both of us. Uh, I don't know if he re recalls this, but when he was really little, uh, we would be sleeping at night and some of his toys would start turning on by themselves. Some of them did not even have batteries in them and they would cut on. He had a tooth. I remember he had a toothbrush that sang Justin Bieber songs Wait, and that what? Justin Bieber. And it would. Yeah. And uh, that toothbrush would turn on sometimes by itself and start. He would, I would hear Justin Bieber singing in the bathroom sometimes in the middle of the night uh, because he, he's, oh. he's a magnet to supernatural paranormal activity. I, I think it's just his energy, I guess. Oh, so Who that is too. Justin Bieber or Ben? Little joke yeah. there. So, okay. so, that, so that toothbrush could start singing baby, baby, baby. Oh, and then you could just, so that's what you would in the middle of the yeah. night? Yes. Seriously? It was, it was, it was scary a little bit. I think Justin Bieber singing in the middle of the night in my bathroom would be terrifying. Little joke yeah. here. Please forgive Justin, me. Be Justin Bieber is terrifying in person anyways. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. That's what I was hoping you would say. We're on the same <laughs> wavelength. But anyway, th thanks. I just wanted to make that observation. Sounds like Ben is uh, definitely on your wavelength. 
Jessica, and, and that's wonderful uh, because I've got, uh, I do have a project that I want to put, that I'm putting together. It's a book project and um, just sight unseen. Do you think you might want to help me with a little remote viewing here in the next month or so? Sure, I would love to, for sure. Well, that that's great. This one's going to be a wild one and it's going to be, it's scheduled to be out by June 29th at the World UFO Conference. And I'll go ahead and tell the title. Is that okay, Jessica? Of course. I'll, I'll let everybody know. It's called Mothman Prophecies Fulfilled. And it's going to be with John LeMay and with an essay from Mark Muncy. He's going, my friends are going to be helping me write it. And it would be a, a real privilege to have you on the front page as uh, our official remote viewer for that book. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So anyway, maybe, maybe we can get Ben to do some of that. We'll talk a little bit later. But anyway, all right, Ben, thanks. You have brought us up to speed from when you were five years old until just recently. Now, I am assuming that you have seen, let's, let's take these in order. I assume you have seen a Bigfoot. Am I correct? And if you did, tell us about seeing the Bigfoot. You all right. Um... It was about a month ago. We went out, me and my mom and one or two other guys, and they brought one of them, brought a night vision, a green night vision camera, and uh, and then they saw a Bigfoot, and it was poking its head behind a tree, and I wanted to see it, so they put it on me, and then I saw it, the fourth one poking behind a tree, like, its eyes, I couldn't see the color of its eyes, didn't see any glare, but then I saw one down on all fours, arms straight onto the ground, like, its fingers, like, poking into the ground, and its, and its legs, like, try, like, spikes, and, like, poked up. Like, squatting. And, yes, squatting. that. Squatting. So, wow. and, and then I saw one, like, and they were all, like, one maybe two football football fields away from us, maybe, and maybe one, most likely one football field. But I, then the last one that I saw, it was staring eye to eye at me, giant giant seven foot feet. I'm guessing and maybe eight. And it was a seven or eight tall creature, very hairy, and yeah. It had, I have, I also have a sketch. There was this one lady that I met at the, at the, uh, the Georgia Bigfoot conference this weekend. She really just came to see my mom and she wanted to draw of what I, what I saw when it was staring straight at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ben, Ben had a sketch made by an artist that was at your conference. Right. Now, now Jessica, uh, of course we're on iHeartRadio and people can't see it, but would you mind putting that image up on your social media so that people can see that? Absolutely. You guys go to the Cryptid Huntress on Instagram and Facebook, and I will put this picture up there uh, on my social media tonight. So go, you'll find it there. Well, that, that's great. Thank you very much. I think, I think that will be important for people to see. And give us the name, if you can, of that couple. They were so nice. They, they came all the way up to North Georgia from Florida, brought their dogs and everything. It was great. It was. That was, that was the Fortmans. Uh, it was John and Coco and their four dogs. They brought all their dogs with them up well, there. All I got to say is that when I saw those dogs the first day, listen, they were so cute. They had a chihuahua and they, and they didn't know the other kind of dog breed that they had. And I got to hold both of them and it made, I could, it, it made my entire day and I can make an entire video just on those two dogs about how cute they were, honestly. Well, now, well Ben, let's definitely see you do that and we'll play it here on, we'll premiere it on ScaryCast, unless your mom wants to premiere it on the Cryptid Huntress, then we'll do it second. But that that would be great. I'd love for you to do that, and, and, and that would be good, because they were really nice people, and I look forward to having them back. You know, we had a lot of people. I had an officer from the United States Army from Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
came to the Georgia Bigfoot Conference this year. I mean, people were coming from all over, and I'm thrilled that they did. They got to see great speakers like you, Jessica. They got to hear Ron Moorhead. They got to hear Brooks Agnew, Matt Delft, Mark Muncy, um, Sonia Thompson, the, the Queen of the Zombies. It was, it was a lot of fun, and Ryan Trimbley was there. Uh, Jessica, you know Ryan Trimbley, right? I do. I just talked to him today. He was in my live chat on my show earlier today. Uh, he's he's a great cryptozoologist and a great researcher. He's you a nice also... guy. I have, I have him on ScaryCast quite frequently. I mean, he's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We did a oh, show yeah. on the Wendigo, and it was interesting what he said. I didn't, I think I'd always been of the impression it was something that looked like a, a horned goat or something or other, and it said it wasn't, and I'm not going to tell, but just go to ScaryCast, go to one of the previous episodes, and you'll find Ryan Trembley in the Wendigo. It was a lot of it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot, and that's what I like about Ryan. He's a good he's a good teacher about the paranormal. Okay, Ben. So we've talked about your Bigfoot experience. Have you ever seen a UFO or an alien? Um. At my, I had an old house that we've moved. We've moved now, but back then I was I was young, and I was, and when I was like eight, I still saw them. And every night I would see like like I guess like twenty, maybe even thirty a night. There were so many going over our house and stuff. It seemed like it. Did we? It, it, it's just it. You could really see them. They were just like a little bit higher than a, than just a normal Spirit Airlines airplane or something like that. <laughs> we had a lot of UFO activity. We lived out in the kind of out in the country where we could see the sky. It was, the stars were very bright at night, and uh, and we often did have UFOs. Now twenty to thirty a night is a lot, but we we did see one occasionally for sure. Um, anytime Ben would go out there and go look. Uh, we, we seem to see them quite a bit. And we also have a lot of UFO activity out in the field when we're out there doing our Bigfoot field research. Uh, ben, ben has experienced them at the house and out in the field. Okay. Is the new house that you live in, is it out in the country or is it in a more of a uh, urban neighborhood? It's, it's, it's not in the country like it used to be. It's more in the city. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that's great. Um, sorry you're still not out in the country, but I am certain that you can see a lot. And uh, just keep us advised about that. Those are, those are interesting things. Now, Ben, you said, and I hope we hadn't talked, I don't think we've talked about this before, but you said you saw something that looked like a rake or an alien or something. It was uh, real, really recently. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It was kind of a creepy, creepy story that you told. Okay, so from like I said earlier, it I got skinwalker, rake, or alien vibes, and so I got a little bit freaked out because I didn't because if it was a skinwalker or a rake. I kind of wanted to leave really bad because. <laughs> yeah. Oops. We just had another crash. <laughs> and Sorry. so Hello. if, so I wanted to leave real bad because I don't want to face a skinwalker or, or a rake or a wendigo because all of those are very stronger than Bigfoots from what I've heard. And because skinwalkers are faster from what I've heard. Wendigos can jump higher, and rakes just sound a lot more creepier, and I don't like that. So, I wanted to hurry back to the car, and then there was another guy with us. What was his name? Robbie. Robbie, and he, when we walked back to the car, I got in, I tried to get in, like, really freaking fast, and then he, then Robbie stayed behind looking to the back way so that nothing charged at us or anything. It was intense, actually. So that was the night before the, the Bigfoot conference. And uh, we had gone up to a spot that I researched. And that field, it is called, we, I do refer to that field as the UFO field because of all the UFO activity that we've experienced there in the past. 
Uh, now, Rob, Robbie is a police officer out of South Carolina. Uh, so he he was um, he was watching our six, as they say. Uh, and uh, when when the energy started getting really intense and we felt like we were surrounded by whatever was out there, those beings that we were we were watching uh, in the shadows and in the trees, uh, he he took up the rear, I guess you could say, uh, of, the, of where we were walking in a line, kind of in a line. He made sure we got to the vehicle before he did, before he came in uh, to the truck to make sure that, first of all, that we got Ben safely into the vehicle that night. So uh, it's, it, it can be dangerous, but we were, we were very, we were safety first that night, for sure. That the spot where we actually were, I believe it was where my mom actually did see her first ever UFO. I, I did my first Bigfoot and everything. Yeah, it was in that film. That's great. You know, it reminds me of, uh, let me tell a quick story about me and talk about the safety of a car. I used to be a professor at a university and two of my students who had graduated came back. They came back on Halloween night. It was a Friday night. They said, take us to a graveyard. Let's go see some ghosts. I said, okay, I'll take you to All Saints Church in Pauly's Island where Alice flag is buried, or at least her memorial is there, and we'll see what we can see, because that is a very creepy, creepy um, cemetery. So I took them there, and they were so interested in going behind the cemetery wall and down to the creek. I said, I wouldn't go down there if I were you. They said, yeah, we want to go down there. I said, okay. So I said, I'll be in the car. So about five minutes later, I heard footsteps. These boys were running as fast as they could, they said, open the door, open the door. They were screaming, I opened the door. And they said, I said, so you wanted to get back in the car with me, huh? They said, yeah, we did. We saw a light floating along the highway. That was the lamp of Litchfield Ghost. And he said that someone, something or someone was chasing them and they wanted to get out of there. I said, sure, I'll get the car going right now. So I'll tell you what, there's nothing like the safety of our is. That's right. Yeah. A, a lot of a lot of times uh, whenever I've taken Ben out into the field and we've spent the night and we go camping, we actually sleep inside the, our vehicle uh, because you can lock that you can actually lock the doors. We have an SUV and uh, and I just feel that it's a lot safer when I have Ben out in the in the woods and we go camping. Uh, if we can get in the back of the truck, make a pallet, lock the doors and we feel much safer that way. Yeah. One one time, uh, I went out. We went out camping with my mom, Craig, and I gave him the nickname of Kaepernick. He's he's my favorite person to go big footing with. Keith. And also Keith, that's his name. And then also a friend, Craig and Bruce, and we slept. Me and my mom slept in the call that night, and Keith, he said, he said, what shall I call? Him? Keith Kaepernick, because that's the, the the nickname that I gave him. Kaepernick, he hoed. He said that he hoed in the night that he couldn't move, but he could hear that somebody was at our camp outside saying that he that they will say that he hoed that somebody was saying that yes, they're all still that they're all still awake. There were two people talking to each other saying that to each other. He he was sleeping in what we call a Bigfoot burrito, which is a a hammock, and we call those Bigfoot burritos. And <laughs> and I forgot well, we well Craig and Keith. They were in know, a tent. I mean, Craig and Bruce were sleeping. They had I tents. They had tents. And then and then me and my mom were sleeping in the call. And then that night, I heard something drop. Some we we have a thin metal top on our call so i hold something at the night i wake i woke up for us for a minute and i hold something dropping like rocks on the top of the call and then i hold something running there we were near a river and i took a bath in it that morning and that night i hold something running across the river and then in to this um, into our side it started our side of where the where the river started and then it ran across the river to the other side okay um now 
Miss Jessica, what do you think that all of that activity could have been from? Well, we there was a lot of stuff going on that night. So we had heard a loud scream in the woods uh, or that night. And the first person to jump out of his seat and get his flashlight and his gear together was Ben. He he said, let's go find out what that scream was. And uh, and so we all we all got on our hiking boots and uh, and we we took off towards an old cemetery that was down the road. So we we and. Okay, so Ben Ben wants to tell this part of the story. Okay. So it was also the Paul that was also the place where we heard the dinosaur no noises. But when we f went to that cemetery, my mom has a picture. Um, so one of the graves we were reading all of them, like these, like the some of these graves look like they were from the 1920s or the 1900s. No, they were actually from the early 1800s. Something like that. Something during World War One or the Revolutionary War, or the Civil War. And this one grave site, it had a black-eyed child on it. It, it was this little statue of this little kid with just a white kid with just black eyes, a black-eyed child. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we, we, we went to the cemetery. We decided to go check it out. And, uh, and I got some, I was taking pictures while Ben was with the fellas and they were uh, looking at all the, read, reading the gravestones. And, uh, and I was taking pictures and I, and I got a really interesting picture after, it looked like there was a large orb or like a rod type orb. But after inspecting it for a while, I realized that was an owl. So an owl had swooped down right over their heads as I took a picture, but nobody heard it. It was silent. And, um, Lots of weird things happen, but yeah, there was a little statue, a trinket that someone had put on a grave, a gravestone, and it it was a black eyed child, actually. So, I haven't told my mom this, but you might have heard the theory that aliens d can uh, disguise themselves as owls, but I've always had that theory ever since I my mom showed me that picture that that owl was a was an alien because. It was silent, like it just flew up, because it was like right above me, Keith, and Craig's heads. It it just flew right by. Could have been a screen memory, is what Ben's saying, I guess. Could wow. have been a hologram. It could have been a normal owl. Could have could be a a shapeshifter. Could be anything. Could have been anything. Now I'm gonna say I'm gonna stop you, and I'm gonna say shapeshifters seem to be more prevalent than people think. I remember I was on the phone at my, at my last condo. I was standing there outside. It was a nice day and it was after work. And I was talking to a good friend of mine. And I saw a young man, he was about 25. I saw him walk up the stairs because that I was facing the back row of another group of condos. So he walked up the first half flight of stairs turned, walked up the other. He got to the landing where the door to his apartment was, and he walked right through the door. He never opened it. He walked right through the door. It was terrifying. Of course, I told the person I was talking to, and she said, I don't believe you. I said, well, I just saw it. And then I got to tell you, the, the, the other part of the story, some people moved into that um, that that condo. And he could have been a hologram. Right Pardon? He could have been a hologram. You never know. Well, let me tell you what happened. Um, I said, did you ever hear anything about the fellow that used to live here? And this girl, you know, the, the it, it was the wife. It was a husband and a wife that lived there. They were fairly young, about 30. She said, boy, I heard the weirdest thing from our landlord. She said that the kid here, you know, 25 year old kid did not pay his rent. So the, um, the landlord knocked on his door and then he heard the television and he had heard the kid on the phone. So he didn't come to the door. It didn't, he, so the, the landlord just opened the door and he walked in and there was nobody in the condo. It was empty. So yes, shapeshifters do happen i've seen i've had several experiences with them jessica i'm sure you've had a few experiences with shapeshifters haven't you 
I have. Well, we we have a pretty well known witch in the Appalachian Mountains called yes. Spearfinger, and she is a terrifying shapeshifter, shape shifting Cherokee witch. Well, she's a witch of Cherokee legend and more. Skinwalkers can also shape shift, mm -hmm. but skinwalkers can't fully shape shift. You see, skinwalkers are way different type of cryptid that are always not friendly because. They were designed to not be friendly. They are hostile, and they will kill anything that get that they will see. Cause, and if they do shape shift, they can, but they will always have something wrong with them. They will always have like a disorder. Like, for example, they shape shift as an animal, such as a deer. It will always have a different kind of body part. Like, it will have like different kind of like, like owl eyes or. It will, it won't, it will have, like, distorted arms, and, like, it will have, like, a, like, weird legs, and, like, it will look distorted. Like, something that's, that's, you're not supposed to see. Just something, something like wrong that. with them, right, then? Yes, so, yeah. Ha yeah. have you ever seen, oh, what did you call them? The Uncanny Valley kind of sounds similar to that. Yeah, something like that, um... Right. It's... Um, I, I've got a little story. Jessica, do you know Spencer Fisher? Does that name ring a bell? It sounds familiar. It does to me. Spencer Fisher was the number two MMA artist in the world. He never became number one. He was number two for a year and a half. Um, my buddy Evan, Evan Reihard, who is a, a weightlifter, he's heard of him. And uh, Spencer knows the tribe that has the land next to Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. And he has been on Skinwalker Ranch because those that tribe is allowed to go on that property. And he said, he says, John, I'm telling you the truth. I saw a man turn into a wolf. He put on a wolf skin. He morphed into a wolf. He dropped the wolf skin that he had. It was just like a cloak, and he ran off. And yes, you know, Spencer Fisher is of sound mind and sound body, and he has seen a shapeshifter shift, and, and it was a skinwalker. So, I mean, these things do exist. I hope I'm not being too strange, but they do exist, right, Jessica? They do. Actually, we have a, we have a gentleman on our team named Tony. And he has a story about his great uncle. And uh, it, many years ago, he said that his great uncle was at the house at home and the police came to his house. He had gotten in a little bit of trouble, I think. And, uh, and so he wanted to evade the police. And so he ran out the back door and the family said that he ran into the backyard, ran behind a tree. And what came out the other side of the tree was a large dog and it trotted off into the woods and until the police left the police were there for a little while when the police left after the coast was clear that dog trotted back out of the woods went behind that tree and it came out his uncle on the other side again so i hear stories like that it's, it's not super uncommon uh there's several people that i know personally that have stories like that well, you know, th there is a there is a legend around here. It's not really a legend. It's a story. Have you ever heard of the Beast of Bladenboro? I just did a show about that last about two weeks ago where I had remote viewed the Beast of Bladenboro. I'm kidding because John LeMay and I are putting a book together on the Beast of Bladenboro. We need to get me and John on your show if you'd like a, a follow up on it. And what, I told, and what I told John is the beast of Bladenboro is a shapeshifter because it will look like one type of animal. Then it will look like a different type. It'll look like a white wolf. Then it will look like a, a dog, a dark dog. It will just like morph into another. Did you get that from your remote viewing? Yeah, from what I can recall, it, it definitely had a lot of cat characteristics. 
to it. But see, people have always suspected that that is a dog man as well. So either a large cat or a dog man or something hybrid, like a hybrid, a hybrid type of animal. Now I have to get my data out uh, to go back over that because the, the week after I had done uh, the beasts of Ladenboro remote viewing target, uh, I, I was, I did a show. I've done this target a long time ago, but I had remote viewed the unspecified animal attack on the, the lady who was a school teacher out of North Carolina named Brenda Hamilton. And so I would, there was, I felt like there was a connection between the beast of Bladenboro and whatever attacked her. Uh, she had, a, there was a fatal attack and that animal, whatever attacked her was never identified. It was a monster, right? It was a monster. It was from, a monster. What I, from what I've actually heard about um, shapeshifters, is that the reason that it's not just because they hide to not let because they don't well the reason that they don't want you to shape shift is not just because they don't want you to get creeped out by it but is but is but it is, the legend has it is that if you see something shape shift right in front of you such as a skinwalker you're selling your soul to the devil that's what I've heard and that's one of the reason. That's one of the reasons that they don't want you to sh see them shape shift. Well, I think when Spencer Fisher and those Indians saw I, it, that 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 entity had a cloak of a, of a wolf skin on it, so they didn't see it. They didn't actually see it. All of a sudden, it became a wolf and ran away. So, I guess in a way, you know, you're you're very right, Ben, and and I think the the wolf did what he did to protect them in a way. The shape shift he did. He didn't want to, you know, it just, I know I, I want to go out there very badly and I want Spencer to take me to be a lot of fun. So anyway, um, you know, this has been great, uh, Ben and Jessica. We've shared a lot of good stories and this is what Scary Cast is all about. I mean, we've all got lots, lots of in-person stories, right, Jessica? We do, absolutely. And it's, it's been such a, a treat to be able to take my son out uh, into the field and, and do some research. You know, we're not just always researching. We like to get out in the woods just to go hiking and uh, to look for Bigfoot sign out there to see to see what's out there. And uh, we have some spots that we go. We actually take our dog out in the woods and it's really fun. It's really cool to be able to um, to get to to have some family time out in the woods, you know, and, uh, and, and the bit, the Bigfoot stuff just adds the cherry on top. Absolutely. It does. And so, you know, we, I've really enjoyed this. I know that the listeners of scary cast have enjoyed it. And, um, I'm going to ask you folks back sooner than later. Would that be okay, Ben? Yeah, definitely. Well, Jessica, will you come back too? Of course. Anytime, Dr. John, We're, we'll be here. Well, thank great. you. Thank you very much. We had Ben King and we've had Jessica Jones, his mom. They are from uh, the western part of Georgia, and they have a lot of great Bigfoot adventures. They are Bigfoot explorers. They they go out and they try to track down this elusive character and to see what it's all about. And uh, you've learned a little bit, haven't you, Jessica? Yes, I've learned a lot. I learn every day. And, uh, and so I'm happy to have my son following in my footsteps. That's great. Well, you know what? That's wonderful. Now, Ben, I'm going to let you have the last word tonight on ScaryCast. So what do you want to let people know? What do you want to give them advice about? Or what do you want to tell them about uh, going in the woods with your mom, learning about Bigfoot, UFOs? Give us the last word. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say if people do go out into the woods and if they see stuff like what I've said t tonight, um, just have protection on you, like have a, a gun, a blade, whatever. Okay. That, 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 that's good. That's, that, that's good advice. I know one thing I carry a silver cross and I carry a Bible with me everywhere I go. And also... Um, the thing about it is that if you're going into the Skinwalker Ranch, anything like that, especially for Skinwalker Ranch, 
always carry holy water on you. Because that's what I've... Because skinwalkers are demons. They're not... They're not sorting actual cryptids. They're... Well, they all kind of... They all... Well, what I've heard is that they're certified cryptids, but I don't think they all, because... They're actually humans... Shapeshifters. Shapeshifters, pretty much. Right, and I know I've had my experience with shapeshifters more than one. So look, and, Ben, thank you very much. And Jessica, thank you very much. We'll see you folks next time. ScaryCast will be back next week, as usual. And enjoy us on iHeartRadio slash ScaryCast. Enjoy it, and we'll see you soon next time on ScaryCast. And thanks to Jessica Jones and Ben King. We'll see you folks later. Bye-bye.